Hey, it's Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing, and we are continuing on with Kimberbell's Home is Where the Haunt is Pillow. And um, what we're going to do next, and I'm doing these two blocks in the same hooping, is going to be Haunted House. That's on page 12. The quilting design we're going to use is Halloween 4. We're gonna, our final size is four by eight, and we're gonna be using a five by nine piece of batting. And then we're gonna do pumpkin row. That's on page 17 with chevron one as our quilting design. It's the same finished size as Halloween, as the haunted house. And again, we're gonna use the five by nine piece of batting so we can fit both of those in a nine by five hooping. So I've gone ahead already and I've hooped up my fabric um, in the nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. And this is just muslin. And these are gonna be the fabrics I'm gonna be using for the haunted house. And this is what I'm gonna be using for the pumpkin block. So let's go ahead and go to the machine and get started. So let me go ahead and clear my screen. I'm going to go into embroidery and let me get my handy dandy chart. I just like making these charts because it's so much easier than having to flip through my pages. Um, going back and forth, figuring out what design we're going to be using. So I'm going to go home get my candy corn quilting designs, and we're doing Haunted House, which is Halloween 4. So I'm gonna get Halloween 4. The end size is four by eight, block by block, P-E-S, four by eight, and there's only one, so it's not directional. I'm gonna set it, um, go to edit, move, and I'm just gonna move that all the way to the right. If you haven't already done it, pick your hoop size. I selected nine and a half by nine and a half, which gave me the outside work area perimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and hit add. And now we're gonna add the haunted house design. USB, home is where the haunt is. And there's my haunted house. It's very creepy. Edit, and I'm gonna go ahead and move it all the way over to fit my design. And you kind of have to eyeball it a little bit just to make sure it's centered in there and it looks great. Um, let's go ahead and say, okay, we're gonna add, and now we're gonna add our other quilting design for pumpkin row. So I, I want chevron one for the four by eight. Chevron one, P-E-S, we want four by eight. We have two four by eights. So we have to look at our pumpkin design. Our pumpkin design is horizontal. So we're not gonna choose this one, we're gonna choose this one. Set, edit, move. I'm gonna move it all the way to the left. Okay, now we're gonna add to that. And we're gonna add the pumpkin row. Pumpkin row, and that's gonna be this right here. Go ahead and set, edit, move. And you're just gonna to have to kind of center it in that design. And that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna do one more click to the left. I'm kind of looking at the little peaks right here little peaks and the peaks here making sure they're the same size maybe one more click that's fine all right and uh, since I didn't move it with my finger up or down I know it's centered this way I just had to center it you know in here this way but it should be centered to the overall quilting design and we are good to go I'm gonna say embroidery and it's gonna go ahead and it's going to do all of the um, quilting stitching for the house first. Um, I have purple in there. I'm just going to leave that. That was from before for my last design. I have white in my bobbin, so I'm happy about that. And we're going to go ahead and do the placement stitch for the batting first. Let me grab my batting piece. Here's my batting. I'm going to give it a little shot of spray to the back.
center it to your placement stitch. Make sure you're covering all, all the lines. Tack it down and then we'll trim. And think about what color you wanna use for your stitching. I think I'm just gonna go white. Because it's candy corn in a... Uh... Momo is here to give me some kisses. Whoops, sorry. Camera was up too high. Nothing like a blurry picture. All right, go ahead and trim. Placement stitch for the background. I'm gonna grab my background fabric. It's gonna be the uh, gray linen. Give it a little shot of spray. And we're gonna go ahead and place this and tack it down. And now I'm gonna do the tack down. Which is basically going to be our trim line too. So don't worry about the color. And then I'm gonna change out to white. I could do a gray. I'm just gonna do white. I feel like, I mean, if you look at the stitching, it's gonna be pretty busy. So I don't want it to, I don't want this this uh, quilt block to look too crazy. So let me just go ahead and put in some white thread. And then we are gonna be ready to start referring to our instructions. This is on page 12 of your instructions. After we do the quilting, we're gonna stitch the house and chimney placement line, and that's gonna be your piece of black fabric. Color shouldn't make a difference. Um, let me just check ahead, but I think it's gonna have a nice bold satin stitch. So I'm just gonna leave my white in and we can do those, both of those stitches. This is gonna be four minutes of stitching, so I'm gonna do some cleaning up while I'm waiting.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that same white and do the placement line for the black small polka dot fabric, which is gonna be the house and uh, the roof. Or I'm sorry, it's the house and the chimney. I'm gonna give this a little shot of spray to the back. There's my little chimney up there. Okay, let me just go ahead and lay this down. And I'm just gonna put it down just like this. I'm just gonna hit start, let it do that placement line or the tack down. Get your applique scissors ready. We can trim this up. I'm just gonna use my snips. Go ahead and trim that up. And you are gonna trim close to this stitch. Now it's going to be the roof, and this is going to be the fabric you're going to be laying down right here, a little squiggly fabric, and it does want you to place that this way going vertical, so I'm going to give this a little shot of spray. pretty squiggly but I want it to go just like that and I'm gonna do the tack down and then we'll trim and we are on step number seven um, tack down line trim fabric close to stitch line And then after that is going to be the window placement line.
Okay, let's go ahead and trim all those appliques. It is a beautiful fall day here in Reno. We had such a hot, smoky summer, so it's just so nice to have it be a little cooler and to have that beautiful blue sky that we're so used to here. Nothing like a little Halloween pillow to get you in the mood for the fall. How much fun is that with the spooky lines? All right, next is placement stitch for the windows. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my foot down and stitch those. And the windows are going to be with that yellow fabric. Let's grab that. It's gonna be this right here. So give it a little shot of spray. This design has 43 minutes of stitching. Well, between this and the pumpkins. Step 12 says trim fabric close. And then we're gonna do the door. I mean, if you played it really, if you if you laid your pieces down and cut as you went, you probably have enough for maybe two of your applique fabrics. Kimberbell is super generous. Their fabric sizes. Okay, let's go ahead and stitch the placement for the door. And your door fabric's gonna be that purple. This one right here. I have scraps from before I'm gonna use. I was just using this in another project. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray. We're going to trim that close to this stitch. And we're going to trim that. And then we'll do the foundation placement line, which is going to be the black and white plaid. Let's pull this forward and trim this.
to slide it on. This is the foundation placement line. That's going to be this fabric right here. it down one two looks like three more applique pieces after this is going to be pumpkin two is going to be pumpkin too and you're going to be using this fabric right here You're going to trim this close to the fabric, the stitch line. This is step number 24. It's just a little thing. And then we're going to put our glitter down for the next one. And if you are doing multiples of this, use your fabric wisely and you could use all this fabric. I probably could have gotten, you know, at least four pumpkins out of this piece, if not more. Look how tiny that was. Okay, placement line, and you're gonna get your, your orange glitter. I know I have pieces that I could use. Oh my God, I have so much orange glitter. I have this whole strip right here. I'm just gonna lay this down. I like to leave about a quarter of an inch. I mean, not a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch. You know what I was just thinking? This is the first one where your color really does make a difference. I'm gonna go over that with some orange thread. Hopefully that'll, I mean the white would be fine too, but let me go ahead and stitch over that. So I'm gonna go back. I guess I was in the groove. Let me put some orange thread on the top. And it'll be fine, even if a little bit of the white is peeking through. The white will be cute contrast. So this is step number, is this step number 25, where it's uh, step number 26. Place pumpkin one glitter right side up, stitch the pumpkin tack down line, trim glitter close to stitch line using a pressing cloth. Um, so they did say to stitch it close, which let's just see if there's a satin stitch around it. Cause if there is, then we won't do it again. The door, stitch the pumpkin too. Yeah, stitch the pumpkin one satin outline. So we do not have to redo this, but I want you to turn your iron on and we are gonna go ahead and just trim it close to the stitch. I'm so used to the glitter being trimmed 
as desired because we don't often satin stitch it. So the white's not going to make a difference. There we go. And now we're going to do the placement stitch for the moon. Moon is trim as desired. So for the moon, I'm going to change it out to a gold. But let's go ahead and here's my placement stitch. Let me get some gold thread. not really gold gold I had a tough time finding a gold I liked um because the leather's not like so gold so I am going to use like a gold because I think it'll look like a pr it'll be pretty as an outline stitch and let me go ahead and put this in. It's definitely more gold than the leather. And I'm going to just hold this down. The leather is more of like a, I'm going to say it's more of like a, I don't even know what I'm thinking. I'm going to go ahead and put this down. And then we're gonna trim as desired. So I am going to trim it about an eighth of an inch away. I think I picked the perfect color. And now we're gonna embark on some satin stitching. Let's go ahead and trim this up. What do you think? That looks great. And I'm going to actually slide this off so I can twirl my hoop as I trim. How's that? Looks good. And there is my moon. Okay, let's slide that hoop back on. Next step is stitch the house satin stitch outline and it is showing it in black on my screen. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. This is just a big old satin stitch. I'm just gonna leave my white bobbin thread in. It's not fine stitching, should be fine. start. And it looks like it's calling for gray next. And this is going to be 
three minutes of stitching. Just let it go. All right, wants to have a gray in next. Let me take out the black. And this is gonna be seven minutes of stitching. I'm gonna put my favorite gray in. I know you think it's that other one, but it's really this one. It's called Cobblestone. It's an isochord gray. It's like the perfect medium gray. 